Now, when you create a class inside of Objective-C or really in any language, one of the things that you need to be able to do is to initialize the class in a way that you want to initialize it. Now, in other videos, I showed how to do that in Java, I think, but what we're going to do here is focus on how to actually create an initialization function or method inside of Objective-C and then how to actually call it. So to get started, what we're going to do is go over here to our .h file for our test view because that's where we want to actually create the initialization. This is going to be a, an instance variable, so we're going, to, we're going to actually create this for the, the instance of the class. We're going to return an ID, and the reason that we return an ID and not an actual object type of test view is because if we inherit from this particular class to create a, a subclass or something, if we were to return the type of this class, we would end up messing up our, our children later on. So to keep anything like that from going on, we're going to actually return an ID type. An ID can basically point to any kind of object that's inside of Objective-C. Now, what we want to do is we want to give it a name. Now, all initialization functions or methods inside of Objective-C should always start with a lowercase init. This is not required, but it's something that the Objective-C community as a whole uh, recommends that you do. And from what I understand, they frowned on it if you don't. So start it with a init and then give it a name of whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to say with username. Now, we're going to do this just like any other function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a type that we're going to be passing into this, which is going to be an NS string pointer. And then we're going to give it the name. We're just going to say new username. And then to keep this nicer looking, I'm just going to come over here. And then we're going to give it a, another method name here. And I'm just going to call it uh, my number colon. And this is going to be sending an NS integer. And we're just going to call it a uh, new number. And then again, this is just the, we, we're here in the interface section. So this is where we're setting up what the contract or what the, this particular thing is going to look like when we implement it. And so now we're going to go over here and actually implement it. So we're going to go into the testview.m. I'm just going to come down. You can put this anywhere you want inside of the implementation between the add implementation and the add end. Um, I typically try to put my constructors up here at the top, um, but you can, again, you can put them anywhere you want. So what I'm going to do is the same thing we did in the other. We're just going to come in and put our get rid of the semicolon and put in the actual uh, open and closing braces. And so now what we need to do is we need to actually tell the system what it is that we want to, to do when, when this particular initialization string is called. Now, the first thing that needs to be done is that there is a default initialize a, a init function or method for every object that we create, and we really need to call that initialization to make sure that it runs before we actually do the things that we want to do. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the self um, object, and I'm going to, I'll explain in just a second what that is, and I'm going to tell it that I want to execute the super init. Now, what is happening is self is a variable that points to the instance of the class that we happen to be running right now. So if you can imagine right now, we're actually writing the blueprint of what this thing is going to do. But at some point, we're actually going to end up with an instance of that of that blueprint or, you know, a car, we're opening the door, whatever it happens to be. But we're, we're in an instance of that particular object. Self is that instance. So by using a variable self, it allows me to be able to call that instance's functions and methods and variables and those kind of things. So the first thing that we have here is we're telling it that we want to take the super and super is actually the parent object or the parent class. And if you remember when we created this, we told it that this thing was going to uh, inherit itself from the the main object. So if I come back over here to the, the testview.h, you can see that this thing is inheriting everything from ns object. 
So what I'm doing with the cell, the super, is I'm telling it go to the NS object type, the that object, and execute its init property. So the or its method. So this is the class name. This is the method name that we're going to call, and obviously it has no parameters or anything that's getting called. Now, when that comes back, it will have done the same thing that we did earlier. And if we look back over here at our .m file, we still have the, the code that we had here. Right here where it calls this init, that line is actually executing that init. So it's doing the exact same thing that it was doing earlier. But now we want to add some things to this, and we have passed in a new username and a new number. Well, we don't want to execute anything else if we did not properly initialize our, our main superclass. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we got something back. So we're going to say if self, then we want to come in and do this. Um, now, what we're going to, going to do is we're going to execute the methods to set the username and the and that variable that we had created. So if you remember from our main class, if we look over here, we created an instance of this test view and we called it TV. And then we execute the method for set username and set the J1 based on that particular instance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy these two things just to kind of speed things along here. And we're going to execute them right here. So the problem is, is TV it has no scope here. But like I just explained to you, we have self, which is going to be that same thing, but it lets us inside of the class be able to deal with it. And then over here, what I want to do is I'm going to initialize, and just to kind of show you that, that there is a difference, we'll put this in all caps. And then for this one, we'll set this to a five. So what I'm doing, or I'm sorry, we passed this stuff in. This is not where I wanted to do that. We're going to pass in new number. And then up here, we're actually going to pass in new username. Because the, these are actually variables that we're passing in to, to this method. So essentially what we have done here is we've declared a new initialization method and we're passing it in the the new username and the new number so this is giving the the system the ability to execute the the init to create our instance and go ahead and pass in these variables up front and then we're going to execute the the parents init function and then if we got a result back from self or you know self is actually equal to that super init then we're going to execute these two function calls and the last thing that we want to do here is we want to return self because we want to actually return the value that we received when we did this init now this particular method is done so now let's take a look at our main.m to see what we need to do to actually use this so right here is where we create our instance of TV and we have our init variable over here, but we want to actually call our init instead of the, the base init. So we're going to say init with, and we're just going to select init with username. We're going to pass it in an at Glenn and all uppercase. And then for my number, we're going to pass in a five. So, and we'll just get rid of that. So what we're doing now is we're actually going to initialize this when we create this variable. Instead of calling init, we're going to override init and we're going to actually call this init with username and go ahead and set everything up front, which basically eliminates the need for these two lines right here. But we're going to leave those so that you can kind of see what's going on here. So the next thing that I want to do here is we're just going to copy this NS log and we'll paste it up here so that we're we're going to show you what's inside a TV as soon as we initialize. Then we're going to reset things here, and then we'll show you what the username is at that point. And you'll just have to trust that the J1 is changing at, at the same time because I don't want to copy that in there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and execute this code. So we successfully built it. And then we ran. And now if you look down here in the log, you can see that the, the first NS log, which is this guy here, 
So this NS log executed right after the init, and it shows Glenn in all capital letters. Then we executed the function call or the method call separately, and then it re-executed the, the NS log and shows it in upper and lower, which is what we did here. So this is the, the mechanism that you would use to initialize your variables or to call an initialization uh, method uh, to override what the what the default does, so that you can set up your your local variables, you know, any way you want to based on the the environment that you're trying to work in.